Um, but I want to preface that with just a little bit of information about um, how EcoCity Builders, along with UN Environment, works with communities and this bottom-up approach. Um, it goes back to uh, how we look at the city as an urban ecosystem. So we've been thinking about this for several decades, and um, we see the city as, of course, not an island to itself, but it has a form and then it has flows. And the resources are coming from sometimes many thousands of miles away, or sometimes they're coming from another watershed, or maybe they're very local. So one of the things that we think about is that there's a principle of subsidiarity of how can we create um, the most benefits at the smallest scale, and then when those aren't met at that scale, we go a little bit further to see how much more we can meet at that scale, and then outward and outward. So um, through that concept of the urban ecosystem and then trying to meet the needs of uh, the citizens at the smallest scale possible, um, as much as possible, we then think of this neighborhood approach as one way to really start to dig into that. And so we see the city as um, a collection of neighborhoods, and each neighborhood is unique, but typically in every city there are maybe seven or eight typical kinds of neighborhoods, or fewer, based on building typologies, um, demographics, different microclimates. So this has um, uh, brought this idea of neighborhood typologies to the forefront in our thinking. And then we want to understand how are these different neighborhood types using resources? Um, and what for? And in what amounts? And how does that change over seasons? So we're using then urban metabolism as a very important tool to understand how the city as a region is using resources at a, as, at a macro level. So we're looking at the flows from source to sink, but then we're going in narrower and narrower, but in a nested way. So we can kind of zoom in and zoom out and then look at it from the, the very hyper-local neighborhood approach. Um, and in, in the years that we've been testing this, which is seven now, we've worked in Middle East, North Africa, a lot in Latin America, um, Canada, and the US. Um, most of our work outside of North America has been in cities that are growing quickly and have a lot of um, not, not formal, not completely informal, but sort of these in-between places that are r rapidly growing. So. Um, I think part of this work is about how do new forms of governance start to emerge between what we think is a traditional city and the city that's actually happening everywhere, which is kind of like a hybrid. So one of the first things that we do when we start working is we, we bring together all of the players. Like, who, who are these players? Well, they come from the bottom and they come from the top. So we look at UN networks too, global, then we get more regional, we get local government, we get universities and academia, and then we get down to the neighborhood, the neighborhood leaders, and then the residents are really the anchor of it all. So we bring all these people to the, to the round table, and we do have a round table meeting, but we really start with the residents and understanding how they're using these resources and mapping them and showing these flows and interacting with them through the entire process. Um, so I want to show you then um, just a few slides from, this is taken from the larger plan that um, the neighborhood of Camino Real in Cusco, Peru has come up with. And then I have a very short two minute video that just like takes you through the process of seeing them put all this together and all the actors. Um, so, so this uh, introdu introduces a little bit of the context of Camino Real as a uh, used to be a hacienda, a big land area around the city, but now the city is reaching out and then people are um, migrating from all different regions 
to Cusco, so it's been informally built, but they still have a very strong tie to the city. They feel like they're a part of it too, and they're very proud. So when Eco City Builders um, begins to work in Cusco, we always form a local team. So we're just in Oakland doing uh, remotely, helping them with data, helping them with mapping, um, helping them with these resource or metabolic information system assessments. But they're, they're also mirroring and doing most of this on the ground themselves with maybe one or two of us that comes and visits and works with them. In this case, it's Sydney Moss who's there in the photo. So we introduced to them um, a methodology, um, and that's in that diagram that you see. First, we do a, a diagnostic of the neighborhood with the citizens. So we use three tools that we've been, um, we've been working on for many years. One is a, a, a framework we call the EcoCity Standards, and uh, it is a framework that looks at urban design and transportation. It looks at biogeophysical conditions, water, energy, food, materials, soil. It looks at sociocultural conditions and overall greenhouse gas, carrying capacity, which we call ecological imperatives or biodiversity too. So we take that down to the neighborhood level and they, with the citizens, they assess themselves against the EcoCity framework. And it's always actually a very exciting um, exercise. They really get into it typically and they rate themselves and we talk about you know, how they're doing, they're doing well in some places, they're really not doing very well in other places. So it's a great way to really dive into it. Then we do household audits. We do a, a sampling of residences where they voluntarily tell us how much water they're using and for what. And um, energy, materials, and food. Those are the urban, we call them, when we talk with them, neighborhood information systems. And um, in these cases, it seems like the people who have the less um, uh, resources or the less financial resources are the most in tune with these flows. So we don't have to spend a lot of time explaining that like we have to do when we talk to people like in San Francisco. Like, what? Where, why do I care where our water's coming from? <laughs> you know, just like, it just has to be there. But these people, they, they, really, they really get it. Um, and then we have a whole guide to this process that we call the Eco Compass. Um, we usually work with universities then through a participatory action research program to reach out and keep connecting and, and developing these plans with the residents and local government. Um, so then we, we form these teams of local experts who are, know more about energy, and they know about water, and they know about transportation. They could be from the university, they could be from local government, but we form a team of these local experts who then interact with the residents to help them flesh out their ideas and their plans for how they can improve quality of life um, in their community. So then we come up with implementation strategies, the experts sort of review the plan, it goes back and forth with the residents. Um, in the case of Cusco, it's really interesting because they have also a very uh, traditional form of government back from the Incan uh, tradition. So each neighborhood has what they call APV, so it's a neighborhood board of directors. And those neighborhood board of directors, they help um, guide the residents in this process of how, what is their strategic plan for their neighborhood? And they interact with uh, local government. So very quickly, I just want to say that after all the many ideas that were very uh, like organically generated with the residents, we integrated them into four groups. So one group was all about urban design and that came into the idea of this urban center that they want. Um, it will have a community microgrid, so it talks about energy, it talks about a lot of different parts of the EcoCity framework that were investigated by uh, the residents and fleshed out with the experts. But you can see their ideas here um, on this slide for the community center. And then their next idea was to have um, little recycling centers. 
Um, they, they have these mapped out too. I don't have the larger plan to show you, but each, each of these plans has a lot of maps that go with them. But this was something that these little places that they already had where they were kind of like putting resources together. And my time is up, so. There was also um, another plan um, for additional um, gardens and different really interesting ideas about how to bring biodiversity and tourism into the community. And then it ends with a governance committee to oversee the whole plan going forward. 